Hello and welcome to our special show, Beat Diabetes, Myths and Facts. COVID-19 has reached almost all parts of the world. Just when we thought we were getting away from COVID-19, Omicron emerged. Since it has emerged in the middle of November, Omicron has spread across the globe like wildfire. Though it has milder symptoms, almost the same as seasonal flu, WHO has warned that Omicron cannot be dismissed as a common cold or a mild disease. And there are reasons to worry about it. People with diabetes and heart diseases can face severe complications. Many people are now reporting long COVID symptoms as well and are needing treatment for the same. Due to the previous lockdown and work from home culture, people's lifestyles are already severely disrupted. Many people have become physically inactive and developed irregular eating patterns, which leads to unhealthier lifestyles and aggravation of lifestyle related diseases. A multi-sectoral approach promoting healthier diets and increasing physical activity can help in slowing down the diabetic epidemic and heart disease. Diseases. Beat diabetes myths and facts will impact and help a large number of people to prevent or control metabolic disorders. Today we have with us experts to share with you advice on leading a healthy life. If you have any questions you would like to ask them, send them to us via WhatsApp to the following number. That's 9167-666941. That is the number to send us your questions for our experts. Do also send us your name as well as your location. Today we have with us Dr. Anil Kumar Reddy, diabetologist, uh, Dr. Anil's Diabetes Center in Nilore. We also have uh, Dr. Dhanorkar joining us, cardiologist and diabetes specialist uh, from Dhanorkar Hospital in Parbani. Let's just start with Dr. Reddy. Uh, we have a WhatsApp question sent by Adil uh, from Delhi who says that my mother is diabetic and her sugar level stays between 275 and 300. With such uncontrolled sugar levels, what precautions should one take while taking the vaccination? Dr. Reddy. Uh, good afternoon, viewers. This is Dr. Reddy speaking live from Nellore. Uh, unfortunately, after this uh, COVID mayhem, many of the patients' blood sugars have gone up like anything. Previously, they used to have normal blood sugar levels. Unfortunately, your mother's blood sugars are so high. I can see the both fasting blood sugar as well as postpartum blood sugar, according to the American Diabetes latest data, have uh, reached the celestial heights. So first, we must bring down the fasting glucose to 140 and postprandial glucose to less than 180 because of this COVID era. Because when the blood sugar goes high, naturally, uh, invariably, people will land up in complications because diabetes is closely associated with uh, autoimmune uh, disorders like and, and, and also people with diabetes are prone to develop infections, especially COVID. So your mother, apart from apart from uh, doing regular exercise, diet and oral anti-diabetic drugs, better, better switch on to a small dose of insulin, especially two doses of insulin to control blood sugars, then she can go happily for vaccination. Unless until your blood sugars are not under good control, I strongly advise her, I strongly advise her not go in a hurry for vaccination. Thank right. you. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor, for answering that uh, question. We also have uh, Dr. Shripa Dhanorkar, a cardiology and diabetes specialist uh, from uh, Dhanorkar Hospital in Parbani. Uh, our next question is by Rakesh Kapoor, who sent us uh, this question via WhatsApp, asking why does the weakness persist for a long time, even after one has recovered from Omicron? What kind of a diet is recommended to get back after Omicron recovery? Well, Dr. Dhanorkar, if you can help us answer that question. Yes, good afternoon. It is a well known fact that myalgias are commonly seen in viral infections. It is possibility that due to inflammatory mediators, this variant is causing more myalgia than any other variant post recovery. Once recovered from the virus, one should be continued taking all precautionary measures as advised, like wearing masks and maintaining the social distancing. Now, people are still unaware of the importance of regular blood sugar monitoring. They think they get some symptoms only if the blood sugar rises. Can they experience blood sugar rise without any symptom even? Dr. Reddy, if you could answer that question. Yeah, as far as Indian diabetic scenario is concerned, complications, complications may be the presenting signs as far as Indian diabetes scenario is concerned. Because diabetes will never ever, will never ever produce any symptoms, whether the blood sugars are 100, 200, 300, 400, forget about the textbook and the literature. But uh, unfortunately, when you come into clinical practice, most of the people, they come straight away, walk into our clinics, unnoticedly, like though those have uh, high sugars, 
they don't it's a diabetes is a symptomatic disease diabetes is a silent killer it will never ever cause symptoms but unfortunately people have the stigma people think they know everything they think they are wise but sometimes it will prove otherwise as far as diabetes is concerned because diabetes will never ever produce symptoms in the first 10 years of uh, duration of diabetes unless until there is a regular monitoring patient will be the better judge because people undergo a lot of stress and heavy meals and skipping of the oral drugs unless until they do continuous blood monitoring of blood sugars they will never realize the importance of diabetes so i strongly suggest i strongly advise i strongly recommend never ever clinically assume that assume that you know everything and you can realize the symptoms unfortunately you have to rely on a doctor or a good glucometer thank you type 1 diabetes and type 2 bi- diabetes are two different types with different mechanism even the age of the onset differs and uh, their symptoms are uh, are there any kind of similar symptoms between the two we have uh, in fact dr reddy with us uh, doctor if you can just answer that question and tell us are there any similar symptoms between the type 2 and type 1 yeah it's a good question like you know type 1 is an aggressive disease we can see at an young age because people will lose especially the children below 18 years they lose severe weight loss severe malnutrition the muscle wasting prone for respiratory tract infection and urinary tract infection and they lag behind their studies in some cases especially the western data has clearly shown that it's uh, closely related to autoimmune process apart from diabetes they we can such for some other problems like hashimotos thyroiditis some other things as far as type 2 diabetes is concerned it's a symptom free disease unless until people uh, get the duration exceeds more than 5 years we can see some uh, weight loss some fatigue some changes in glasses because diabetes affects the whole vascular tree you know we have seen many deaths because of uh, post covid even acute myocardial infarction in gyms because previously their ecg was normal they have type 2 diabetes their sugars are were under control but unfortunately when they go for excessive exercise or vigorous exercise we have seen practically seen many deaths among doctors many deaths among uh, young individuals especially people with uh, good physique so think never ever neglect diabetes it is a symptom free disease whether you have symptoms or not trust your doctor trust your blood sugar values and lipid profile ecg treadmill other investigations play a key role because the pre diabetes early diabetes impaired glucose tolerance also causing many deaths many symptoms because we have practically seen that the textbook literature clearly shows that after 5 years of duration of diabetes people will develop complications but during the post first covid wave second wave we have seen many young doctors very young individuals lost their lives unfortunately they were asymptomatic they were healthy till the last day so because but because of the virus load affects not only the lungs but first initially we concentrated much on lungs but after we realize that the covid virus affects myocardium also so it's better whenever people start going for gym better go for complete cardiac evaluation then start going to gym or any other aggressive physical exercise thank you dr reddy can early short term insulin treatment in people who have recently been detected with diabetes uh, help to reverse type 2 diabetes yes it's a good question because the indian concept indian mythological concept from uh, charvaka cheruka days we always trained most of the doctors were trained like non interference is the best treatment when you have diabetes chalnedo we can wait for 6 months when you have hypertension we'll wait for 6 months when you have some other disease like you know cancer we'll wait let the nature will cure it's uh, like that but unfortunately after the american data european data japanese data active aggressive in, in intervention is the best treatment to prevent the complications of diabetes but unfortunately we still follow the old guidelines of once the patient develops diabetes we ask them to go for diet exercise then if the sugars are not under good control we can go for uh, tablets in the later stage it means when the people start developing complications either microvascular like eye kidney or macrovascular like heart and feet then start insulin but unfortunately this concept has proven wrong this concept has proven wrong all over the globe 
all over the seven continents of the world. I have the proof, I have the evidence, I have the data. So now we have to think like active aggressive intervention with insulin because diabetes is a state of anabolic dis dysregulation. When the pancreas is overburdened by high blood sugars, definitely it will lead to atherosclerosis, anabolic dysregulation, complications in the heart, complications in the high. So to prevent burnt out diabetes or to prevent the apoptosis, apoptosis like beta cell death. So better start earlier insulin initiation so that we can give rest to pancreas beta cell as well as the body requires in a much faster way because once the blood sugar is 400, we can't uh, come uh, control it overnight either with oral drugs or diet or walking or exercise or gym or yoga. So we need to have a small dose of insulin. Honestly, we need to have a small dose of insulin unconditionally, unintrepidly for a period of six months so that we can uh, bring back to the sugar's normal level. Then we can start either oral drugs. If the sugars are still low, the patients can happily continue with diet or exercise. Thank right. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Reddy. Well, we also have a question for Dr. Dhanorkar. Uh, Dr. Type 1 DM is associated with high morbidity and uh, mortality. What factors affect the long-term prognosis of type 1 diabetes? Uh, if you could answer that, Dr. Dhanorkar. Identification from the moment of diagnosis of factors related to worse outcome of the type 1 diabetes mellitus might help in selecting those patients who should be given more intensive management. Strict control of blood sugar appears to be the key. A regular screening is important to detect diabetes related health problems early. It is also important to keep your waist measurement, blood pressure, blood glucose levels, and HbA1c levels, and high cholesterol within a recommended range. It is very important that you don't smoke if you have a diabetes as it increases the likelihood of health problems. Type 1 diabetes metastasis is associated with the high morbidity and premature mortality. More than 40% of patients experiences the blindness, end stage renal disease, early death due to infections and metabolic complications. End stage renal disease and proliferal retinopathy is twice common in a type 1 diabetes patient. Hypoglycemia from mono management errors, increased risk of infection, microvascular as well as retinopathy, neuropathy, and neuropathy complications and microvascular comp diseases. These complications result in increased risk of ISD, CVA, peripheral vascular disease, gangrene of lower limbs, chronic renal disease, reduced visual ac acuity and blindness, at autonomic and peripheral neuropathy. In UK, the death rate in the type 1 diabetes mellitus in a post-COVID patient was more than 3.5 times as compared to the other patients. And it is a type, it is a double the normal uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus. Right. Uh, well, uh, uh, Dr. Dhanorkar, if you could just answer this question. I just asked Dr. Reddy that type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes are two different types altogether with different mechanisms. Even the age of the onset, uh, that also differs. Are there any similar symptoms when it comes to type 1 and type 2 diabetes? If you could answer that, Dr. Dhanorkar, we just uh, did ask the same question uh, to uh, Dr. Reddy. But if you could just uh, throw some more light on this. Yes, uh, type 1 diabetes occurs in childhood. It is the auto destruction of the beta cells in pancreas. It is inability to produce the insulin due to uh, then the type 2 diabetes mellitus, the hyperglycemia, which is due to the resistance to insulin action, inadequate insulin secretion, and excessive or inappropriate glucagon secretion. The symptoms are similar. They are increased thirst, frequent urination, bed waiting in children who previously didn't wait uh, during, bed, uh, during their night extreme hunger, then unintended weight loss, irritability and other mood changes, the fatigue, weakness and blood vision. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doctor. Well, if you have any questions you would like to ask uh, the doctors that we have, Dr. Dhanorkar and Dr. Rendi, send them to us via WhatsApp to the following number. That's 919167-66641. That is the number to send us your questions for our experts. Do also send us your name and your location. We're heading into a very short break. We'll be back with a whole lot more.
welcome back to our special show where we have Dr. Reddy and Dr. Danorkar with us uh, to answer all your Fa uh, to uh, help us answer all these questions related to uh, diabetes. Well, uh, Dr. Danorkar, my question is uh, to you as uh, this is a question related to weight. Should the diabetes medication dose, that, does that need to be revised as people with diabetes are mostly working from home these days and they tend to put on more weight? Dr. Danorkar, does that uh, dosage have to be revised because one is gaining weight? Yeah. That the COVID-19 pandemic has already altered every aspect of our work and life. More people are working from home amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Employees who are at home do not have the opportunity to socialize with the colleagues and many may have the decreased physical moments. These both are uh, results into the loss of walking between different meeting locations. Also having convenient and constant access to food often leads to overeating and unhealthy weight gain. In this case, patients may need to change their diabetic, diabetes medication regularly and with monitoring the blood sugar levels as well as the HbA1c levels, they are monitoring their dose with the help of their local physicians and the necessity of either insulin or oral hypoglycemic agent modification. The diabetics who are on, on insulin therapy, they must visit their doctors regularly so as to avoid the complications of the diabetes per se. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, doctor. Now, my next question is for Dr. Reddy. How does heart disease affect women differently from men? So, it's a good question. Like, you know, women, especially these uh, hormones play an important role in heart disease is concerned. Indeed, there are more cases among deaths among the women with heart disease because women they have high prevalence of hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism and the cholesterol levels are high, especially the young women they are associated with PCODs. So polycystic ovarian disease and hormonal imbalance, central obesity, metabolic syndrome is much more common in women than in men. And Especially in women, there are enough studies to prove that, to show that there is a clear evidence the premature atherosclerosis, the accelerated atherosclerosis is very common among women with diabetes. Especially whenever you come across women with high BMI more than 25 years, with high LDL levels, triglyceride levels, especially when they have a hypothyroid, we have to be cautious capricious while treating the patient because diabetes is a disease of vascular tree the complete vascular tree because of accelerated atherosclerosis reacts faster and because of this hormonal estrogen and progesterone play a key role in myocardial metabolism so whenever uh, i strongly suggest people especially women with diabetes better start a statin better start a statin, low dose of statin to prevent the cardiovascular complications. Thank you. Well, uh, Dr. Dhanorkar, if you could just help us answer that many years of scientific studies have shown a close relationship between cardiovascular disease and cholesterol levels. Should one focus on lowering dietary cholesterol or saturated fat? Yes, that the more focus should be focused on the dietic cholesterol level. If it is not controlled with only diet, and the help of the lipid lowering agents can be taken with the help of the monitoring the uh, total lipid profile, the high HDL cholesterol and LDL cholesterol and the triglyceride. And depending upon the which part of the cholesterol is increased, the treatment is planned according to that so as to reduce along with the help of diet as well as the medication. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, doctor, for answering uh, that question. Now, Down syndrome is known to be associated with autoimmune diseases, including type 1 diabetes. Does it have any association with type 2 diabetes as well? Dr. Anil Kumar Reddy, if you could answer that question. Yeah, it's a good question. Like, you know, Down syndrome is uh, most of the time is closely associated with uh, type 1 diabetes. It's a autoimmune disease. It's a chromosomal disorder. But unfortunately, we have 1 million Down syndrome children uh, in India. So Down syndrome, you know, it's a tricky situation. You know, it's a like, you know, moving pendulum or a rocky chair. 
because down syndrome associated with uh, mental retardation that is that is the bad luck that is a sad part here down syndrome mental retardation is closely related and type 1 diabetes with down syndrome it's very difficult to treat because children with down syndrome they cannot express their feelings you know people uh, uh, with type 1 diabetes with down syndrome they are more prone to develop complications of diabetes because they are reluctant to take insulin they are you know they never ever maintain particular timing because the schools for down syndrome are confined to only metros people with down syndrome in small towns because 70% of the indian population lives in villages there are no adequate school there is no adequate clinical training or psychological support for down syndrome people so it's a uh, disaster you know it's a misery it's a misery of all evils so we have practically seen with my own eyes people with down syndrome losing their retina lo- losing their limbs at an early age because of mental retardation there is no psychological support so as far as diabetes type 2 diabetes is concerned in literature we have seen only two cases down syndrome with the type 2 diabetes but uh, because probably the conclusion is because of central obesity or uh, high body weight metabolic syndrome probably there is a relation between uh, down syndrome and type 2 diabetes as far as down syndrome mental retardation is concerned people with down syndrome some studies has clearly shown that giving high doses of amino acids will improve the uh, metabolism and they may reverse some complications of uh, mental retardation so people with down syndrome they need to take uh, amino acids definitely clinical support it's a long way to go so definitely down syndrome and the type 1 diabetes because down syndrome is an autoimmune disease it clearly affects both endocrine system and non endocrine system also because we have seen many cases of down syndrome with thyroiditis and other diseases a cluster of complications together so parents with down syndrome has to take extra care about their children because they are prone to develop low sugar syndrome symptoms especially early morning hypoglycemic episodes are very common among down syndrome children so they have to follow a strict diet regime and also continuous glucose monitoring is essential part in management of type 1 diabetes in down syndrome patients because they never ever express their hunger their appetite to uh, uh, to their parents so unfortunately they regularly give three doses of insulin two doses of short acting insulin and one dose of long acting insulin in the night but unfortunately they cannot recognize the symptoms of hypoglycemia so down syndrome children should be treated separately they should run separate clinics thank you Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Reddy and Dr. Danorkar for joining us on our special uh, show regarding diabetes. And if you have any questions you would like to ask us, send us your questions via WhatsApp to the following number 9191676641. That is the number to send us your questions for our experts. Do also send us your name and your location. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Reddy and Dr. Danorkar for joining us on this show. With that, we're saving a very short break. News and updates will continue on the other side. Stay with us.